morning glory, y'all. Last night I opened all the mail and I came home to my swimming sweatshirt. Finally, the back of it is really cute too. Hold on, let me put the camera down and show you. And I got my first pair of b-ball shorts. It's so cute. It says like the whole list of all of the songs. I'm sorry, I can't even really like see if this is, I keep turning my neck around, but it hurts so bad. I have had a kink in my neck since we landed back from California. So it's been like almost a week and I just booked a massage because I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> and I need it to go away. But on the bright side, the drive was very swift. We only took two stops for gas and like pee breaks and stuff. It's always stressful to move livestock, you know? It's not like they like it. So they definitely were a little bit distressed at the first stop. The second stop, not so much. They were totally okay. And they just lie down and then go to sleep. And we're gonna let them out now because it's the next morning and we wanted them to get acquainted with Vermont in the daylight and it is full-blown fall outside and it is so beautiful you have to see let's go see that's just so you can walk on it you can walk on the grate this is vermont come on out this is vermont good girl ducky well, you know them, Peach, Rue. That's not really the Peach, not really the easy way off, but you went for it anyway. We're gonna let them free range for a little while. We also have to go get them some new stuff, so they're just gonna explore for a bit. I think like for today, what we should do is like spend a lot of time, like, I mean, I don't know what you have to do today, keeping like a, more of an eye on them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then like tonight, assuming I can get that shed up, we can just shut them inside the shed at night. Yeah. And then, you know, open it in the morning. Okay. And just see how that goes for one day and, you know, on from there. This is our new house, girls. They're really t taking it all in, going for the perimeter. I've never really been in woods before. I know. Is this kind of fun for you, Ducky? Peachy, what about you? Hi. Hi. That's so bad here. That's so bad here. You prefer a big fat lady up. They're not even hungry yet. They're still just adjusting. You're really this jealous, Rue. Hi, baby. There goes Peach off to the woods. Maybe not. Yeah, I mean, I do want them to play in the woods and stuff, but it'd be also great if they just kind of saw this as like a perimeter. Mm -hmm. In general, like if we do decide to free range them long term, like if we are concerned about predators and stuff, a lot of the times that's more of a concern at night, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Also, if we free range them, this is where our septic is, so we should remember that. But, I mean, it's like them walking on it doesn't matter. Yeah, they and they're not going to root on it. Yeah, like if they start to, we'll have to do something. It would be different if we, like, put their pen directly on it and they only had a couple places. Yeah, like, even then, I think, well, I think it's good for it to have all this living, like, grass to help just circulate uh, or cycle the water a little more. Maybe. Isn't it so pretty out? All the beautiful fall colors. Oh! She's taking a little whizzer. Good girl, Peachy. With Alice. So I'm telling you all before I tell the wife, I know she's not gonna be happy about this one, but if I'm gonna put up this shed, I gotta do it at least somewhat right. And you can't just put a shed somewhere. Like you have to think harder than that. So I have to like level the ground properly. I have to put down some gravel first, you know, some drainage and flatten out the flooring and put some uh, landscaping fabric under that to help with weeds. And before I do any of that, frame the outside of the, you know, the perimeter. And it's a 10 by 10 shed, so I'm going to do like a 12 by 12 perimeter. So do that with pressure treated wood, stake those in with some rebar and screw them together, something like that. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. I'll show you all the order later. Then put the gravel in and then I can start actually building the shed. But like, as you could probably imagine, that's going to take me a while to do all that first stuff. I need to get gravel. To get gravel, I need my truck. To use my truck, I need to go to the dump. And it's like just not really great because I was sort of thinking in my head maybe I could build the shed today, but there's not even a slight chance that that's gonna happen. But I don't know what the pigs will do tonight. I guess they'll just sleep in their penitentiary. Because here's the other thing. Oh, okay, well, sure, that's not that much work. Let's just get started on it. Oh, wait, no, because I have to unload all this shit. 
and there's like a little Cats 22s. Like I need to bring back the trailer tomorrow morning. So I need to get the house out of the trailer, but I wanted to put the house in the shed. I think I know where I'm gonna put the shed. So I guess I'll just get the house as close to it as I, as I can. Yeah, I mean, you think you get older, you start the plan for uh, underestimating how difficult the task might be, but not learning that fast. I just kind of shoved the house back closer over the wheels so that the weight would be a little easier to, or more evenly distributed. That'll help me be able to actually lift this off the hitch. I might need to push it back further, but that house is really heavy. I don't know how thick of plywood I use, but thicker than I wish I did. But that worked out pretty well. That made the weight pretty gentle. tip if it helps you out if you're using a dolly you just gotta pull it out all the way and then you can lift it up and then pull it back in set the hooks on here that way when you're rolling up a dolly you're not fighting a lip right here ready to get my sweat on as always i gotta show you all my quite impressive packing job <laughs> I didn't have nearly as much stuff this time, which presents its own challenge. When you're jam packing a whole truck full, you can fill every nook and cranny and you don't have to strap everything in, you know, super carefully. But alas, I had a lot of extra room in here. I probably only utilized like 60% of the space in here, maybe, maybe only 50, but everything stayed super secure. Oh, that is the only thing I'm concerned about. That's a very fragile mirror. So that's not good that that's what it did. That might've been a bad mistake. <laughs> It's my great grandmother's mirror. I've had a few things that I've had to be super careful with and failed. Well, this was supposed to be a flex, but kind of walking back with my tail between my legs, it's kind of embarrassing. All right, well, I'll do better next time. I also think it's time to start rethinking the basement a little bit because we're about to bring a lot of new sh in here. A lot of it's probably going to just go to storage down here. And like, I mean, I need some space to work. So I'm kind of like trying to find that balance. Now there's a lot of wood that I've stripped from upstairs that I need to probably move somewhere else and just, I'm not sure what the best way to do this is, but like I have all these shelves, like these could actually be being used as shelves instead of just taking up space. So I might just spend the whole day, like this is what I'm saying. It's like, can't unpack the truck until I fix the basement. There's always something else. planning to take this dining table upstairs. That'll open up a lot of space in here. I'll try to use that as a work table more so. There's a lot of potential space in here uh, that's not being utilized that we really need now. Um, so I have actual workspace along with storage space. That's pretty much what I'm spending today doing along with uh, unloading the truck. Meanwhile, at the crusty crack. Okay guys, I left Finley at the house and I'm not just leaving him to unload all by himself. He's got the dogs and the hogs to help him push some things around. Peach has been going into the basement, just like rummaging through everything. And <laughs> Finley's the one who wanted to try to free range them today while we get things set up for them. So I'm like, she is just being a hog, testing her boundaries. <laughs> but they're having fun. And now uh, when I left, they were sleeping under the deck, which was very cute. So they honestly, I know that a lot of people in the comments are probably gonna be like, aren't you scared about predators? We're gonna shut them in at night and there's not really animals that come to our house during the day. And we have a trail camera and the girls are like securing their boundary. Like they're walking around the property line. They haven't even ventured off into the woods alone at all. They like have been kind of like still in sight even when they go and explore in the woods and forage for acorns which is very cute to watch them do but pigs are really like okay if you have food and you have water and you have a safe place for me to sleep I'm good they're not gonna like wander off looking for a better option they love us they know where their house is and they know where we are and so they're pretty much just staying around the perimeter of the house which is really cute and they're like sleeping under our cars and just being adorable so I think everything is all good anyway I actually also left the house because I thought that I had booked an appointment for a massage today 
because my neck I was saying this morning in the vlog like I can barely even like move it this way and my shoulder is just in such pain so I booked a massage for 1 p.m but it's for tomorrow so I showed up to the place being like hey I have an appointment and she was like you do <laughs> I don't think I have you on the books today anyway um so that happened and I'm gonna have to go in tomorrow instead which is fine but also on my drive I didn't just have to go to get a massage that's not happening today I'm at the feed store now because I'm gonna get some stuff for the pigs and this place is so cute I was looking for a feed store that is more like local co-op vibes rather than like tractor supply company or something that's like a bigger chain in Vermont definitely has way more like co-ops and cute stuff like that so i'm gonna look for some agricultural things and hope that they have some stuff for the hogs and if they don't then i could always go down to massachusetts or over to new hampshire but check this place out like come on this setup the nursery so cute very exciting times i totally checked my p.o box for the first time since opening it Woohoo! also yes i did indeed bring half of a peanut butter jelly on a plate in the car with me i was hungry okay a little hog update for you Wow. Well, dogs, it's cleanup crew time and also unloading time. Finley's been clearing out a spot to put all of the stuff that was in the moving truck here instead because we're kind of running out of room in the basement, even though we have a big basement. But it's very, very beautiful out right now. And it looks so pretty over here in this corner specifically. This is the area down here that we were thinking we would put the barn. So we were like cleaning up a ton down here before we left, but the girls haven't really been getting into much. They've literally been hanging out in this corner for hours. I went and got them a little, I forgot to show you the haul from the feed store. <laughs> Hi, Ducky. You like this grass here? They like this shade spot, but I got them a new, water dish and they've been having fun splashing that around and kind of just doing a little bit of rooting around here looks like they already started to make a little rooted hole a mud hole over there but we're not gonna let them stay over here for long because this is our oil hookup and then we're also getting three big tanks put in right here of propane and that's happening next week so you guys can enjoy this space for right now. Ow, that was your hoof on my big toe. Anyway, Finley's doing a little cleaning up. He hasn't really asked me for much help, so I'm kind of just letting him do his thing and I think I'm gonna go make the dogs lunch and myself lunch. Many hours later. Hey y'all, I'm gonna insert in a quick story time here because shortly after that last clip that you saw, this was like right around dusk but Finley was actively unloading all of the stuff from the moving truck. I was inside moving boxes around up here and the pigs walked away. I'm not even gonna say they ran away because they did not go far. They went to our neighbor's house. And the reason I wanted to tell you guys about it too is because in this video, I was like, the pigs know where we are. They've been staying around the house all day. They know where their food and water is and whatever. And they do know that. And I'm also telling you this because they have really proven themselves to be trustable after this little incident where they had one big hurrah. So looking back on it now, it's more just silly and also just so in their nature and in their history to do something like this because they are addicted to apples. And every single time that they would escape or break through their fence or lift up, you know, just somehow get out in Oregon, they would always go to the apple tree at our neighbor's house that was like the forbidden fruit on the other side of the pasture literally they could see it from their pasture fence so we just have to plant them an apple tree but basically right where finley was like unloading the truck like where the basement is right down the hill from our backyard our neighbors who we hadn't met yet at the time that the pigs went over there which was also a factor in the story that made it kind of stressful just made it like a little bit harder to find them because all of our other neighbors on our road know that we have pigs and they know us and they have our phone numbers and stuff but these people don't 
they like live on a different road than us like our properties back up to each other so we hadn't met them yet so that was like a factor that was um harder to navigate in this whole process because the pigs had like waltzed down the hill it really was not that far i want to say maybe like 50 feet away and they actually have an electric fence because they have a farm with farm animals they have an alpaca and they also have great pyrenees guard dogs like farm dogs and you can hear them sometimes in the vlogs i'm pretty sure in this vlog i was like you can hear our neighbors our neighbor's dog anyway the pigs had gone over there and they have an electric fence but it wasn't on yet they only turn on the electric fence for their pasture at night and when the pigs went over there it was like right before the sun set so i don't think that they had turned it on yet so the pigs just waltzed right under <laughs> their fencing and were just eating all of the fermenting apples that had fallen off their tree i think that they were just bored and were like I smell apples somewhere and I'm trying to learn my boundaries. You know what I mean? So Finley ended up finding them before I did. I was looking on like this side of the house, like the front yard, and he was looking in the backyard and then he called me and was like, hey, they're at the neighbors. And it was more of like a silly situation with the neighbors. Like they thought that it was funny and they thought that the pigs were really beautiful. And you know, we exchanged phone numbers and they were like, come over for a coffee or a beer or something sometime you know which was very nice of them i didn't actually go over and meet them because i was over here with the dogs i'm pretty sure i've shown like how close their pasture is to ours in a vlog like you can see it through the trees you know and so i met finley like on that little hill and it was right when the sun was like fully setting and so it was pretty dark and the pigs because they were eating fermenting apples were a little tipsy <laughs> And I've talked about this before on Instagram, but um, the pigs do like to get drunk. They enjoy a hard cider, beer, wine, you know, stuff like that. So they definitely were feeling it walking up that hill. And I'm pretty sure that whole walk of shame for them made them be like, I never want to do this again. And again, like I said, it was more like silly with the neighbors. Like we live in farm country. Um, Finley was like every single farm that I knew growing up that had pigs, their pigs free ranged and they would just kind of like walk around the property and vibe, you know? And so he was the one, and you've heard me probably say this in this video, um, like up to this point, but I said something along the lines of like, Finley's the one who wanted to free range them because I wasn't really on board at first especially after they had done this and you'll hear Finley in a future clip too being like are we gonna prove ourselves girls like talking to the pigs like is mom really gonna trust you <laughs> because it does take time for an animal to learn its ways and be like oh I don't have to do that. So this all being said, I just want to say I was not on board with the free ranging at first, mainly because they had been pasture pigs for the first five years of their life. So I was like, that's all they've ever known. And maybe they like won't do well with the other way around, you know, free ranging around the property. But ever since that incident where they went and ate the apples, they haven't gone back. They've been literally using the woods as their boundary around the property which is like really ideally what we wanted them to do seeing the woods as like they've actually been using it to go to the bathroom they have been like excusing themselves to the perimeter of the woods to poop and pee which is very nice of them pigs are very perimeter creatures like when they have their bathroom patterns so that's been interesting to watch them do they just graze all day long and then literally take themselves to the shed that we're building in this video to sleep. And since their great escape on our move-in day, they've been successfully free ranging for 20 days and have just been vibing, enjoying life and really being well-behaved girls. So we're very proud of them and they've definitely proven themselves to me. And yeah, I just wanted to insert this story time into this video because it's just such a factor of farm life that I feel, and this is like a huge frustration for me sometimes talking about the pigs and farm life online, is that people don't actually have a basis for what it's like. And so they think that we're being like neglectful or wrong or bad in their minds because they're like, oh, if I was your neighbor and your pigs walked over to my land, I would have done X, Y, and Z. But our neighbors were like, these are beautiful pigs. 
we're gonna try to find their owners, you know what I mean? And we're so nice and chill about it and friendly. And I just can't drive home enough that like this isn't that abnormal to have happen in farmland is to like have somebody's cattle or animals run up on your farm or something. Like literally when we were out of town, our roofer came by to measure up our house for the roof replacement. And he sent me a photo of two grown ass horses in our yard just eating grass and he was like y'all don't have horses do you do you know who these belong to and i was like no i don't and i'm like out of town right now so i can't really walk them home and he was like well they were there for the entire measuring job and then they left through the woods so hopefully they found their way home and i was just like okay you know <laughs> and when we were living in oregon like i mentioned with the pigs going over to eat the apples in olia and john's yard they were always very understanding and we would just you know put them back in their fence or whatever but constantly we would have chickens in the middle of the road our neighbor's chickens would come and eat and graze in our garden looking for worms and stuff i remember there was one time when there was a peacock loose in our backyard like you know these things happen so <laughs> I just wanted to insert this clip in, tell you the story, tell you that the pigs have proven themselves and there's nothing to worry about. And also that they had a joyous time eating fermenting apples, getting drunk, and then having a walk of shame following a flashlight up a, up a steep hill back home being like, damn, I'm never gonna go off the sauce again, <laughs> going off the deep end. Lord knows Peach is the one who led that brigade because Ducky was like, what the hell is happening? She is a funny little lady. Anyway, they're literally sleeping in the sunshine in the backyard right now. So I'm just happy that they have, you know, learned that this is home and haven't ventured back to the apples, knock on wood. But even if they do, the neighbors are chill around here. So I just want to say that so that you are chill as well, because some people are very much not chill about these things in my comment section. And I'm like, I love my pigs so much. I want nothing but the best for them and same with Finley and like they are so much so a part of our souls and our farm family now and I just like can't describe that enough like how much we care for them and how much we care when stuff like this happens but it also was the part of their learning process for them to have time to free range now for their lives. So yeah. All right, I've said my piece, enjoy the vlog. So this is the garage side. I moved all the wood, moved all the current active projects, set up these four racks that I had. All the stuff on the other side is mostly like domestic storage, I guess, or whatever. Like all this shit is like homestead project, either tools or things you need to do, stuff like that. Yeah, man, I don't know how to make those distinctions, but in my head, it's very clear which side something belongs on. I haven't gotten like a tent as much as I thought I would today. I thought I'd unload everything and build the shed and I guarantee you I'll be talking to you in like a week like, yeah, I'm gonna start the shed soon. I carried this slab up today from the basement. Oh my God, it was too heavy for me. It was one of those times you're just carrying something and you're like, this was a mistake. I lifted too much and now it's in my arms and I can't actually hold or carry it. As a lie, I did get it up here. I mean, I carried it all the way up to the porch, which is a pretty good jaunt. And then I uh, kind of half laid it down, dropped it there. Then after getting my head in the game, picked it back up and brought it in here. I wasn't very happy about the process though. This whole table, uh, other people like it sort of, but I think it's dumb as hell now. I really want to redo another one because there's so much wrong with this, but those edges hurt. I don't know how heavy this thing is. Like a hundred pounds. That might be generous. Maybe it's not, I don't know. Yeah, I'm really trying to think about that because it's like, I mean, I would like to think I could lift a hundred pounds. I'm not a peewee little bean cake you know what i mean but i was struggling so while we're talking about bad news hard times y'all know what that means so yep f my life i know it's fresh because coming back from my trip i found it on my plastic bins and stuff definitely some little rascals right up there pulling that little yellow shit out dropping it there taking a shit in my garage i don't like that one bit i don't know how i'm gonna deal with these mice i pretty much every time i've had mice problems i just don't deal with it because i really 
don't want to deal with it, but I've made a pact to not do that this time. And I want to get it early before it gets really bad. I'm not excited about that. This is a really nice woodworking table. There's a reason there's not wheels on it, I'm sure. Uh, but I just can't stand life without wheels on my tables. So I slapped them on. I'm keeping the regular feet, you know, if I ever start getting into anything a little more serious uh, where every stroke matters and whatnot, then um, I'll put those back on. This is like a, just a ratty table he left that was in the poop corner. I'll probably slap some. It's just metal. Oh, I don't know what I'll do there. This needs wheels. Just didn't do it today because I ran out of time like a whole day ago. Tomorrow. Hello. Feeling pretty good this morning. Seems like some accomplishable goals, but really I'm opening this camera to show these lady hogs this morning. It's going to be on really good behavior. We're not going to freak mom out again. She's totally gonna be down for free ranging, but you're totally gonna prove me right and not be terrible hogs that run to the neighbor's house. Yeah, we'll see. I hope that they're better. This is where I got unloading yesterday. Really most of it done and a lot of the hardest stuff. I'm pretty sure I got out of here. We got Larry's bowl chair here. Very excited about that. But yeah, shouldn't be too hard this morning. All right, this clip is going in when we've already put the shed up. As you can see, it's gorgeous and beautiful. And in this video, you'll be seeing every step of the way from the foundation to building it. But I wanted to say that our friends at Patio Well are the sponsor of this video today. And their motto is simplify your life, store your patio. Patio Well makes products like metal sheds, wooden cabinets, and deck boxes for outdoor storage. And they have a new series of plastic sheds coming in December. Ours is part of their large size series of metal sheds that come in 10 by eight or 10 by 10 and we got the color coffee in the 10 by 10 size to use the most space that we can. The installation was very easy with QR codes and in the instructions to help with any difficulties. All the details of their products can also be found on their YouTube channel at Patio Well if you need more tips. We're using our shed to house our pigs but I know this is probably not what most people use their sheds for but with it being so durable and roomy we figured it was the perfect place for them. Before they just slept in their wooden house outside with much less room so they're pretty happy to have this too. So if you're in need of outdoor storage, Patio Well has provided a survey you can fill out linked in the description box. I'll be randomly selecting a winner of a five by three metal shed from the list of people who fill out that survey. So definitely fill it out if you want to win one. And code MH15 will also get you 15% off of their website. Thanks Patio Well. Y'all gotta like this one. The power of my little engine that could. I gotta stop turning the camera on for embarrassing things. But that's all right, I just hit my seat. No, no harm done. They came to see what you're doing with their house. Watch out, Ducky. What if she just got in? Right, I'm gonna try just towing it forward. Yeah, and it might just slip right out. Watch out, Ducky. She's going in. Oh, you know what? She's going in. Ducky. Now she wants to be in. <laughs> what about you, Peach? You gonna go add another 200 on? They really liked the woods down there that we cleaned up before we left town. Okay, Peach, that was a little rude. They found like where that carpet was draped over that rock and like everything had died underneath it. So it was just really cool soil and they were just in heaven. It's really cool to watch them be like woodland pigs, you know, because you can only do so much in a pasture. Hey, Peach, don't load on there. Hey, 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 hey. Nobody's asking you to load into the trailer. Actually, we're asking you to 
Getting on in. 3,000 years later. Ta-da. Pretty good stuff. Thought I'd just shoot shoot a little empty shot. Maybe I'll get one without my, my sweaty face in there. That's pretty good. That's good work. Right. Better than how I packed it, right buddy? Here's a little panorama of the beautiful basement work I did. Well, let's all give a hand because Finley is good at packing things. Does this man play Tetris? No, but that doesn't mean he's bad at making shapes fit together. The end of an era. Good riddance too. Can't forget about the brakes this time. We're off to return the truck and trailer now. The pigs are in their little house in the driveway. You can actually see them in the rear view mirror. They're in there with the pallet closed on them. All right, I gotta go follow his ass there and drive his ass home. I'm gonna hope I'm in frame here. The hogs are excited, kind of. I'm just showing y'all the tools that I've got planned here. Actually, I'm just gonna bring the camera closer. But this is a nice shot, so enjoy it. So I got four two by six by 12 foot boards. I got this pickaxe hoe combo. This is a gravel rig right there. And I have just a little thin shovel right there. So this is my theoretical site. I'm gonna start on it and see if I wanna continue. There's a lot of roots uh, and those are what I'm most worried about, but it's pretty flat here, about as flat as it gets. This is, you know, the shots right there that I was just showing and the sun comes up right there. So they'd have nice sun in the morning to warm up the house in winter the shade from the trees uh, and the general cooler climate that exists under foliage should keep them cooler in the summer so it's a pretty good spot in that sense and then we would build the pasture out that direction which is some of the best grass we have my plan right now and i'll film it instead of just talking about it too but is basically we got the shed from, I believe the company is Patio Well. They sent us a shed, 10 by 10. You're supposed to make like a nice foundation for it. You could do concrete, that's probably the most reliable way, but it's cheaper and easier probably to do a gravel foundation. So basically I'm just gonna measure out 12 by 12 square. Oh, it's 10 by 10 shed. You want maybe a foot on each edge of it, just uh, do a little breathing room. Uh, you'll thank me later. So I'll measure out 12 by 12 foot square, string line it, and then spray paint the square so I know the actual lines to follow. I guess I'll put a board on it and see how level it is. Depending on the read I get there, I'll just start hoeing out a line. Once I get a level square for them, first before I set them in place, I'll put landscaping fabric down. Then I think I'll have that go to the outside edges of the wooden frame square and go under and around the wood to sort of maybe protect the wood from some stuff on the soil facing side. I think the side that's facing the gravel will have a good bit of air and drainage there. There's one of those little or chipmunks keep coming in my garage. Once I get the landscaping fabric in place, I will then put in the two by six by 12s. I will make sure those look okay. And then I will screw them together at the edges, trying to keep them as square as I can. And a later date, I will go get gravel. Anyway, I've been talking for never. Well, it's just a pretty little sight, isn't it? Take a moment to appreciate that. Pretty cool. Well, it doesn't come out on camera. It's pretty bright on the on the film, but in real life, it's pretty dark right now. So I'll have to wrap it up. I think I have this square. It's not exactly oriented, like perfectly how I want. This would be like, I guess center out. I mean, that's fine. I thought it'd be more like this, but it's more like that. Not that the pigs are gonna yell at me for it, but uh, I just hope it doesn't end up looking off balance. The reason I pushed it over here so much is because there's just so much tree roots and stuff. I know I'm not gonna be able to get through and to do this, I just started one spot, put a screw in and spray painted it, measured out 12 feet to there, marked it and spray painted it, then measured out 12 feet to somewhere around there. Then I went 203 inches and two thirds to somewhere around here. Then I just kept going back and forth, comparing the measurements and moving the screw a little bit closer to where it needs to be. And I have now gotten it so that the diagonal measurements are matching. I'm gonna put the pigs away and wrap things up and that's my alarm. Well, it's another day, another Finley sleigh. He's working on this shed for the pigs and it's gonna be so good for them. And they're gonna love it so much. This is a good proper spot for them and then we're gonna move the barn somewhere else. I don't know if he already told you this. And the pigs are clearing out under this tree. They like this little tree now that Finley cleared out some of that brush under there. So, you know, you can kind of get the idea. I put the screws in just to mark a definitive point on the corners. Then uh, I, I just don't have like the stakes and all the proper sh 
So I'm just using that heavy tool, tie one end of the string there, then use a rock to get it taut on the other side. You know, the, the string's so light, if you just rest it on here, the grass is gonna make it move to either side and you won't get a straight line. But I feel pretty good about that line. So now I'm just gonna continue this. I'll set my weight over here, oriented this way now, and uh, just put a rock over here. And well, I lost my fourth screw from being completely honest. So uh, I'm using that stick as a screw. Um, yeah, so pretty simple. All right, so if Meg was paying me hourly, I'd probably spend a little more time squaring that up, getting it just right, but uh, I'm not being paid. So I'm just getting this thing done. Got the spray paint lines in. I feel like that little self-string system worked. Now I'm just gonna move the big rocks, all that shit out of the way, any big sticks, and then I'll get the hoeing. See, that's the difference between a rock and a root. That root will just eat that all day long. A rock just breaks. At least these slate rocks do. Some other rock won't. If I have to do that the whole way, I'm gonna break my back out here. Like out here, I'm pretty sure that, that could be a straight up, at least from some cut in driveways I've seen, you can just bedrock like six inches under the soil or even less. All these other rocks have been pretty easy. They break up for me. But whatever's going on under here, not cooperating. I honestly gotta think that might just be bedrock right there, though that is hard to believe because it goes this whole way. But I mean, pickaxing through bedrock is just, I don't think anybody does that anymore. It's not the BCs anymore. I either have to bring the ground down to a level point or I have to bring the ground up to a level point. And the more up I have to bring it, the more gravel and shit I have to buy and move and all that stuff. So theoretically, it's easier to just dig some deeper trenches for sure. But not if you have to dig through bedrock. So I love a geologist's input on, you know, whether I'm just talking on my ass or not. I definitely can get these high points down, but I don't know if I can get everything down to the lowest point over there. Really pretty lines on this rock. It's beautiful. Striation. One eternity later. This is about how far I've gotten after like probably around four hours of this. It's really hard, really slow work. This whole area, yeah, it is just bedrock right there. Luckily, the kind of rock it is is a little easier than some other rock out there. So, could be worse, but uh, not the most fun day. First, the dentist snuff. No and pickaxing. So this board right here is not like truly level. It's also not exactly where it's gonna end up. This is exactly like one of those projects where I'm like, I don't need to spend four more hours pickaxing rocks to get it perfectly level. Like this is just a gravel pad. Gonna do a little more here, uh, but I just wanna bring the camera out while it wasn't raining. But yeah, I don't really recommend this work for anybody. It pretty much sucks ass. I also know that I'm gonna be, cause I don't do stuff like this all the time. I'm I'm gonna be so f***ing sore and beat up tomorrow. Later that same evening. This shot's for anybody who saw our kitchen area before. Just do a big clean up. Well, I'm gonna bring that all downstairs. I was just organizing it into sections. Lol, me. So happy about finishing the floors. That's a lie. I'm actually not. I hate the way they turned out, but I'm not gonna talk about that right now. I'm happy about the way that this kitchen's cleaner. And this is a amalgamation of different projects, but it's kind of funny to see all this stuff I've had to bring up. Free tape measures, caulk stuff, nail screws, grinder, saws, wrenches, hammers, drivers, lights, plumbing stuff, painting stuff, strap, electrical, brushes, sander, sanding paper, paper towels, scrap metal, PPE. Pretty good haul right there. Don't forget this trusty feather. I used him a lot. The next morning. This is where I left things yesterday. I uh, kept going a little after uh, I last talked to the camera and felt a little better after that point. Um, I broke through just a little more rock there and that got me flat and, or you know deep enough that I could put the board in and it still needs some work. I can kind of see that overall this should be like a level enough square. I'll put the level on it so you all can see. You know, that's far from perfect, but once this backside goes down a little bit, it'll be pretty much within those lines. So that's good enough for me for this case. Yeah, everything's going pretty good. Feeling positive about it. One note I'll say is I did buy rebar to stake in 
the corners of this um, framing here, but the soil here is, I mean, it's not even soil, it's just bedrock. So it's not gonna allow for me to do that. I may try to do something on the corners that have a chance at it. Overall, I'm not too terribly worried about it. You know, this framing's just holding a bunch of gravel in with the shed on it. Can't really see what the worst that could happen is. I think the gravel will hold it in pretty well. And if it somehow flew off, then it flies off. It's starting to rain pretty hard now, so I'm gonna go inside. I uh, won't be doing as much filming outside today because of the weather. So real quick, I'll film this, and actually I'm realizing I gotta bring my tools in. You know, and that corner went as low as I felt like I wanted to. That still left a little extra room on this edge over here, so I'm just building up a little wall. Really don't need much, just building it up slightly and built it up a little right there. And that'll allow me to get something that's nice and square enough, level enough, and uh, serve my purpose and function without really having to sacrifice anything as far as I'm aware of. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. So now what I'm doing today instead of working on the pad for the shed is I'm gonna try to make a makeshift, just real small pen to put them in. I'm just trying to get creative. Right now I'm thinking if I strap heavy together then it kind of creates a collective weight they won't be able to move you'll see whatever I come up with it's raining so I won't be filming it but I'll show you after so here's the plan to move the house I'm gonna try to drag it with the truck what I need is lift from the front so that this front edge doesn't catch so I put these eye hooks on either side and I have this really heavy-duty strap and you know I've put a lot of tightness on there to try to get a little lift but it's fighting the suspension of the truck so I'm hoping that's just enough to make this pretty easy, but I'm gonna get Meg to film while I'm uh, trying it. Yes. Wow, it's working really well. Hi. Hi. It's pretty wet out, huh? That's why dad brought the house down so you could get in there if you want to get out from the rain. That should be fine. Finished just in time and I'm hoping it's good enough. There's some small changes I would like to make, but can't due to various reasons one of which being that the four wheel on my truck is broken and it's raining out and really muddy down there so I just can't move it very much and I don't want to get it stuck badly uh, other thing is that it's just small as but I'm working with what I have here and it should work for a very temporary free fence. So here's the situation. Basically using old leftover plastic culverts that the previous owner left on the property and some ratchet straps. I have those eye hooks that I put in to tow the house. So that's what the ratchet straps are hooking onto and it's a nice secure, so I could tighten these real tight to hopefully keep them in position. My biggest fear is that the pigs will just push it up and go right under it. They may do that. I can't 100% tell. At least now they're not just like literally stuck in that little cell of a house and you know can get out get some fresh air and use the bathroom out there and stuff like that. So yeah I feel pretty good about it because especially because it was free it only took me like two hours. Probably would have been faster if it wasn't raining so pretty good setup. The following day. So a little update on the temporary pig pasture. Really work great. My girls they don't test too hard you know they're pretty happy animals and maybe when we first got them they were they would test pretty hard but nowadays they're just like oh there's a fence oh well I don't know if they still might be able to get out if they really wanted to I'm not a hundred percent sure but at least for just like a chill overnight sleeping in there all that they seem pretty content and you know I'll let them out every day and stuff like that feed them in the yard here let them go to the bathroom so far they haven't pooped or peed in the pen area which is good I mean hopefully I can let them out enough so that they don't have to do that keep a cleaner space for them because realistically I mean if we talk about like what I need to do before I can focus on a really good like fenced in pasture you know, I need to finish this foundation I need to build the shed I need to get their house onto and in there and then I'll probably have time to focus on a fence but you know it's, it's gonna be a little bit until I get to that point and that's just the start of a fence I mean we still need to talk about what we want to do in that regard but you know a good fence takes a long time so it's a lot of work. Got a lot of decisions to make there. Need to do my research, all that. But wanted to let y'all know that this worked out pretty well. Pretty happy with it. Uh, like I said, free did it in about two hours. So my only complaint is that it's so small. Later on, if it feels like this might be a little longer term than I wanted, I might go hike back into the woods and drag up some more culverts because I know that there's at least one more back there. And even just one more would make that a little more sizable. Uh, so. Yeah, there you go. And I'm not gonna get to get too much of this done today because football's about to start, but I'm just pickaxing down 
so I can fit a 4x4 four four in there just to kind of square up that corner and I'll put a 4x4 four four in the other three corners as well but I won't have to work so hard to do it you know there it'll just be floating and then I'll fill in under it and try to build support put some rocks under with some dirt same thing with over here this corner's too high this one sets pretty much perfectly so hopefully I'll get this corner done cut the 2x4s and if I'm really lucky I could actually get this screwed together which would be awesome I can use just regular screws but for something like this where I'm relying on those screws so much for strength in the shape it probably makes sense to use like some long like eight inch like timber lock uh, type of screws which I know I have at least I think I only have two of those I may try to run to the store before I screw it together but maybe I'll just say fuck it or you know maybe what I'll do is put some temporary regular like three inch decking screws in there and then come back with timber locks later that's probably the best idea there we go I guess I should go cut the four by four so I can Stick it in and see but that looks pretty close it won't take much more so I'll measure out my marks get a straight edge with this draw the line with that flip it around use this to keep getting a straight edge around the whole 4x4 four four. then I'm using this to cut it because all I need is a quick rough cut and this is this blade is long enough to cut through it in one slice my uh, circle saw I have to flip it and do two cuts which is a pain in the ass and hard to line up proper and these are the moments you just step back take a deep breath and watch all that hard work pay off for gorgeous cuts. God damn, these are going to serve a purpose. I see that green tint means these are chock full of things that make it never biodegrade, which is unfortunate and fortunate depending on your perspective. See that green color right there? That's how you know. Some wood has like what looks like a bunch of staple marks. That means it's pressure treated. This green color means it's pressure treated. Uh, don't burn wood like this and careful what you use it for. Like, don't make a cutting table out of this <laughs> cutting board. Look at all these worms lost as sh You might as well be in New York City, buddy. You do not want to be in here. This homie's got places to be. He's getting dusty. He's in Joshua Tree right now, that's a desert. This guy's going the right direction. Hollis! Wrong way! Get to the chopper! 10 seconds later. Save their lives. We can just cut out all the boring parts, Meg. It took longer than I thought it would. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's get the level out and see. Wow, that's perfect. So that's looking good enough for sure. That's close to the middle line. That's about what I was getting on the other side. This side is perfect. So I'm definitely happy enough with the way this is lying right now. That matches the other side. So we're hitting about that middle line. Uh, I'm happy with that. I'm happy that they're at least parallelly off. Here she is. All my beautiful hard work come to fruition. I'm pretty happy with how it ended up. Now I just gotta fill it full of gravel. I got a really warped 2x6, so this corner is pretty fucked, but that's the kind of thing that I'll hate and nobody else will ever notice. So, yeah, I'll just move on from that. Glad I got that done. Now it's just gravel time. Uh, won't have to think about this. Just straight to gravel. Actually, I gotta put it in the landscaping fabric but good progress. Real quick before my thief wife steals the camera for the day. These are the tools I'm using. I'm gonna flatten this area out as much as I can, build up the base to these framing walls, cut this to the length of this, staple it to the underside of these framing boards. By this he means landscaping cloth. Then I'll put some gravel in, but probably not today. Normalize it. Normalize being a tourist in your home state. Okay, I'm wearing my Vermont hat out today because I'm gonna go show Sasha, Silence Tippy, and Lala, Weed Queen, official Weed Queen on socials and stuff like that. I'll put all their socials on the screen. Both of them have like weedy accounts and non-weedy accounts. Anyway, I'm meeting Lala for the first time, seeing Sasha again for the first time in many years. When was the last time I saw Sasha? Was it really 2020? Feels like closer than that. Anyway, I'm gonna take them around Vermont for the day because both of them, I think, have never been to Vermont before. At least Sasha has never been. So we're gonna go and do all of the fun things and I'm gonna take you along with me. Ah! I was gonna try to scare you guys. Creeping. You saw me backing up. <laughs> hey y'all, how's it going y'all? Hi, Hi vlog. Uh, we're, we're double doing, vlogging. Yeah, one's up, one's <laughs> below. Guys, this is truly, 
I can't believe it. Your first time in Vermont. Yours? First time in Vermont no. for me. Okay, you've been here mm -hmm. before. My first time meeting you. Yeah. <laughs> what Very a thrill. Exciting. The gals are going to go on a little road trip today. I asked them if they wanted to come in my car, and they said yes. And I was like, I yes, like, please. It's a better idea. Yeah, she's been driving all day, mm -hmm. and she can, like, I told her, she, you can stick your head out the window like a dog. You know, <laughs> do whatever you need to do, and take all the photos and the videos. It is truly so beautiful right it's now. It's the perfect like, day. It's the just, perfect day. It's a little overcast, but it's going to kind of clear up. And I, it's a Monday, so it's not like all of the popular spots are going to be like crazy, yeah. I don't think. Because yeah. it's a holiday, but not everyone has this day off. Wait, what yeah. holiday is it? Indigenous People Day. Oh my God, it is. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. the same day as my grandma's birthday. <gasps> Oh, I need to call my grandma. It's her brother's brother. birthday. We were driving and she was like, I just realized it's my brother's birthday. <laughs> you guys, I'm just so happy you're here. So we wanted to say hi. We're at the Connecticut River. We're at actually the Dummerston Covered Bridge. Very gorge. Having a little fall moment. There's some other people here too. And this is the secret beach I've been told about. Secret ah, beach. Secret nice. beach. Sasha's wearing her really fun cleats. Hi. I was trying to rhyme it, but it's not cleats. They're really cute. But yeah, we're having our little, just our sit it, our sit and escape, you know, just gals being gals. Just catching up. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the colors are really giving right now. Yeah, this is nice. Hi guys. We're Wait, just do you want to see my my touristy thing I got? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I want to see yours. It's embroidered. That's really nice. I told wow. her it would match my hat. And Normalize the same it. Same one, but navy blue. Yeah, we each got something. I actually got some Vermont sweatpants and then I also got a little log cabin. Shout out to the person who messaged me on Instagram and was like, because I was asking about those little log cabins and I was trying to find one <laughs> I was on. Like, who is that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to find one on Etsy and somebody replied and was like, they have those all over Vermont at Vermont country stores. Like, you should just look the next time you're there. Because I think this was like before I moved to Vermont that I was posting about an incense burner that would look like a little log cabin and then have the incense coming out of the chimney. Me. Anyway, I bought one, but I don't have it to show you right now. <laughs> I'm just all bundled up. We um, had a little bathroom excursion in there. We're at Hogback Mountain. Person in front of me didn't flush. Yeah. Literally, like. Cancel that. It was like a line. <laughs> so, like, you know, they walked out as I walked in, and I'm like, what? What is going on here? Why? You outed yourself, sir, with being in front of me in line. It's a Monday, but this place is still pretty popping. It is. It's cracking. It's a long weekend for a lot of people. We had a day. We went around. We took pics. We had ice cream. We had coffee. Oh, yeah. We had snacks. Oh. We had charcuterie. We actually just went. We didn't show you on the vlog. We were just oh, chatting yeah. it up, you know. Yeah. We went to the River Garden Marketplace downtown in Brattleboro, which was always a sleigh. And it was pretty chill down there. Normally it's pretty poppin' whenever I go, so I'm glad that we went. The sweet anyway. potato fries. Oh, you like them? Yeah. yeah My sister's so a sweet good. potato woman. The so sauce. I tell her. So it was like a maple honey mustard. Oh shit! Yeah, really it's really good. good. Love. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm so happy you guys came. Yeah, it was so nice for having you. I'm so happy that our worlds finally yes. collided, my darling. I love you so much. Oh. I'm so happy that you guys came up, even for just a, a brief afternoon. It's yeah. two hours yeah. away. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah. come on now. Yep. Well, I want to be in a Vlogmas vlog. Yeah. I want us to be in a Vlogmas oh, vlog. Of speaking each other. of Vlogmas, I dropped them off because I got to get home to my man and my hogs. But this is us. This is Lala and Sasha, and this is me. We were both boys. I'm sorry, I could never stop doing that joke. It was such a good day, though. I love seeing my friends. You came to meet me. That's nice. Just like a little dog coming to say hi to its owner. Yeah, you are a sweet lady. Come on. Oh God, Rue has a cracked ball. Hi, cracky ball dog. I hear another little pitter patter coming from over here. Oh, she's using the restroom. Let's leave her in peace. Look, Finley got all this done while I was out today. The landscaping cloth looks really good. Yeah, so unfortunately I ran out. Calculated. <laughs> it's because I didn't, like, it is enough, but I didn't calculate for, like, the overlap and all that stuff. So sure. I'll need to get some more and I want to get some, like, long timber lock screws. Rue, where did you find this? Found this yeah. in the woods? She's been doing this all day. No, I actually just gave it to her a little bit ago. 
basically I was telling you or texting you, you know, all the fencing options seem really hard, flawed, like yeah. really difficult. What I've been messing with over here, like this whole area, like, I mean, I don't know how that metal post is there. I have no idea. Like that's straight up bedrock right yeah. there. Like you can't drive anything into it, at least not with the tools I have. So mm -hmm. basically I was like, all right, well, we have all these stumps hanging around here. And like one thing I think about a lot with the pig fencing is like, yeah, like they could easily knock over a stump and stuff like that. But if all these stumps are like rigidly connected to each other with, you know, cross-linking pieces, like a, you know, slats horizontally, then- She is um, so fast. Like that weight becomes collective. So, you know, they could easily lift two uh, logs with a cross piece, but they can't lift 20 logs and 60 yeah. cross pieces. Yeah. yeah. So these are just the ones right here. Well, the stump fence could be kind of cute. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, maybe it'll be kind of cool. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. I just like had the idea. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see how it goes. I didn't like read it on the internet or anything like that. When you look around here, there's just so much... Like, especially this way, like look how many of these trees you could just cut at the base and they would be like the perfect cross piece and stuff. Yeah. And like I could even like leave all the brush. Well, it depends how attractive we're trying to be. The more impenetrable the wall looks, I think the less that they're going to test it and stuff. One thing I'm still uncertain is like all this is non-dimensional, you know, so how am I going to, like a screw would be easiest because then I could just yeah. slap it on. but it's probably not the most secure in the long term. Yeah, then I was just stacking this because there was a few log pieces over here and I wanted to get all the ones that were there. And... Mm -hmm. Ducky already is taking herself to bed. Why are you, why are you covered in leaves? <laughs> it's such a pretty smile, but... You really do have a pretty little smile. Yeah, that's basically all I did. Well, you did amazing. It took me forever for some reason. Yeah, the wood really stacking hard. always takes longer. This is my little log cabin incense burner. I finally got it, and it came with little incense to burn in it too, which was nice, a little starter kit, and a little, you can barely see, but there's, yeah, there's like a hole in there. I'm just trying to take off all the stickers and stuff. And then I got these, which I've been dreaming about for a year. The next morning. Here she is, teed up and ready to go. In all honesty, Bertha's been having some issues. She's got a lot of work coming up. I just hope she pulls through. Gotta pick up like three yards of our stone close as I could find I looked real hard it was 45 minutes away it's probably gonna be three trips I'm gonna try one see how that goes perfect time to shout out these heavy-duty leaf springs yours truly put on himself and they said he wasn't a mechanic well that's because I'm not land of the dogs and the crushed stone also land of the hogs Hey, take it down a notch. Peach, you look like a drunk woman. Jesus Christ, Peach. She just, she almost just fully sent herself. Peach, you're acting like a mad woman. You're acting like a mad woman. Oh, hi, Ducky. Hi. This is Kerfluffle face. Uh, okay, one sec, Peach. Freedom's never tasted so sweet. You're very scary when you try to climb over your enclosure. Peach is not the kind of lady you would want to mess with. Wow, Ducky. Voluntarily going back in your pig prison. They're so cute. How about you, Rue? Are you cute? Show everyone what a booping snoot you have. Oh. Yeah. This is the bed of my truck. This is how much gravel, roughly speaking, or stone this truck can hold. It's a 2000 Toyota Tundra with heavy duty leaf springs put in place of the stock ones that come with it. So I got that much clearance. <laughs> Honestly, I'm very comfortable with that. I've done much dumber drives before, including across the entire country. So this is a yard, aka like a bucket. I need like three and a half of these most likely to fill the foundation area. It's like 50 minutes away. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with out here, but they're not fans of stone in this part of the country, which is ironic because it's a granite state. I feel as though I should be able to get stone easier than the experience I've had today. The people were very nice in Massachusetts, but I had to drive 50 minutes to get there. Not ideal when I have to take minimum three loads. So, okay, my point was this is a yard right here. I may go back next time, try to be like, can you do like a yard? We'll try like a yard and a quarter. Usually they sell by the halves, um, but I would probably just pay for like two and a half yards more, try to do a yard and a quarter in each load. Um, and I feel pretty good about getting a yard and a quarter back. Guys are definitely pushing it. You know, I wouldn't go any further than that. Don't even do it, lady. Hey, 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 hey. 
<laughs> Shit. All right, Peach, you're very athletic. We all see that now. I was bringing this out to show you how I felt them, but they don't make it easy to feed. Hey, they don't make it easy to feed and tell. Can you just turn the crack down to level like three instead of 3,000? Yeah, it was actually a pretty good helping I gave you if you could get your face out of the food bowl to see. Peach is a very large lady. She's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with it. Went and bought some more of the roll. Now I'm gonna take these firewood pieces out from each corner, get the level out, and uh, try to get it as level as possible. Then I'll start dumping rock, baby! Perfection is not in my current vocabulary. I'm just looking to get this done and over with, boys. 20 minutes later. Well, that's a yard of gravel. The next day. Load number two. I put some of the uh, bigger rocks that I dug up, stuff around this size, and just kind of put it in there, eat up some space, put it closer to the edges. I don't know if that's gonna help or not, but I gotta unload this truck quick and then drive back to get the second load before the place closes. So that means it's time to get the muscles out. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. One shift later. Done. Just got back with my third load of rock. The third and final. Y'all can see that's a nice hump right there. I was thinking of the black eyed peas trying to think of what you call it. I'm feeling good about this. I feel like I got plenty of volume just in those two loads. After the third, I think we will be in the clear. Gonna get that unloaded real quick. Then it's game time. Then we start to get to do a Lego set and that's where it gets exciting. I'm actually quite excited to build the, the shed. I did the online instructions and it looked quite simple. So here we go. That's about a pad full right there, give or take. I gotta see it in the daylight. Get along a piece of wood or something straight, drag it across and just see how uneven it is. But um, one thing I found interesting doing this is that I forget how much the wood costs, but driving back from the gravel, I had gone to Home Depot first to pick up some more landscaping fabric because I had uh, ran out of the last roll. Paid like $32 for that 50 foot, four foot wide by 50 foot long landscaping fabric. Medium duty. Went to pick up the rock and paid like thirty-three fifty for a square yard of stone, aka like a whole truckload. And I just thought it was crazy when I got back, put a little landscaping fabric down, and then unloaded my whole truck of rock on top of it, and was like, "Wow, that costs the same amount somehow." Like when you just look at the two next to each other, you're like, "How does this make any economic sense for like literally over a ton of stone?" to cost basically the equivalent to one small roll of landscaping fabric. That was mind blown. Anyways, pretty happy with this. I'll show you, I got some leftover. They told me at the spot I would need three and a half yards. This is three in total that I've picked up. So not to say that they were like being dishonest or anything like that, but I think it's just the uneven surface there uh, ended up eating more of the volume than the math would kind of lead you to believe it would. But that's a lot of leftover rock here. Not enough to fix a driveway or anything, at least not my driveway. I'll probably use this. I've got really uneven heights between the grass and the concrete from my basement floors. So I'll use this rock to help smooth that differential out at least so I can drive my lawnmower in and out, which I currently have to like lift up and down, which is a pain in the ass. So 50 minute drive to get this gravel each way. Spent a lot of time in the truck, but uh, had safe drives, got enough gravel, cheap price uh, in my book, and I uh, got the job done. So overall, can't complain. So I'm in the basement tonight, just doing uh, a couple last minute things before I uh, wrap it up for the evening. Right now I just brought down here uh, the four separate boxes. This nice company, Patio Well, sent us this. It's a 10 by 10 metal shed, uh, 10 foot by 10 foot. This is what I've been working on the pad down uh, that I just filled with gravel for. We're gonna put the pigs in here, uh, put their smaller house inside this bigger shed, probably insulate both and give them a nice comfortable spot to be in the winter. I mean, I can't assemble it in here. I'm just kind of opening up these boxes, 
uh, at least the first one, see what's in there, see what I'm looking at, looking at for tomorrow. But yeah, I'll film the uh, little unboxing here. All right, so like I said, the brand is Patio Well, and they've got all kinds of sheds, plastic, metal, different sizes. I believe 10 by 10 was the biggest size they had, and that's what me and Megan opted for. Worked the best for our situation. And then we went with the metal because in general, we try to use metal over plastic where it makes sense to do so. So it looks like there's just some gloves to help with assembly. All this kind of sheet metal can be really sharp on the edges. So that's probably what they sent these for. And this is just a little warning notice for that little part sheet of what's in here. And then the assembly instructions. So this is primarily what I wanted to get to. They have the boxes labeled one to four. So I just opened box number one and that's got the instructions as you would logically think it would. I'm going to give those a once over right now and uh, that'll give me a better idea what I'm looking at tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, hey there. Bet you thought you'd never see my ass again on this screen. Hey guys, I'm back. I have had a lot of appointments this week. I've had to go to the dentist and the doctor, and today we had the propane people come out, which is a whole separate story that I'll get into in a second, but I've been busy with some other things, and I've also been feeling a little bit under the weather, if I'm being honest with you. You know, the seasons are changing, and while it is very beautiful, it's getting chillier, and I think just that in itself is like making my body feel weird. I don't know if it's allergies, but I've been blowing my nose a lot. This morning I had a nosebleed, and like I said, I went to the doctor, I'm fine. I've just been really lethargic and kind of taken it easy. And Finley has taken the brunt of my, I guess, inactivity when it comes to projects. And he has done this all by himself and it looks fantastic. So I'm gonna help him assemble it today. And yes, like I mentioned earlier, we also had the propane people come out today and they dropped off two propane tanks and there was supposed to be a third tank dropped off, but our road is closed today to the house. And so when the propane guys were trying to get up to do the job, the guys who are working on the road, they're putting in like these big drainage pipes. They're called culverts. I didn't know that until recently, but I guess, yeah, the road people told them like, hey, if you go up there, you're gonna have to come back pretty immediately. Just drop off the tanks and come back. Otherwise you're gonna be stuck up there because we're about to close the road and you're the last car that we're letting back through here. And they were like, oh. Okay, so it was just incredibly inconvenient that um, our road just has road work on it on the day that we were going to get our propane working for the first time in almost three months since living here. And I have to drive down today and ask the construction workers when the road will open up again so that I can call the propane people and have them come back and finish the job. But either way, on Monday, we actually are having um, that same company who's doing our propane also offers oil. And they're gonna come back out on Monday to do an oil tank inspection before they fill our oil, which will power our furnace. So either way, like they're coming back for that. And I'm just gonna keep calling them and be like, I need you to do X, Y, and Z, or now you can come out or the road is open or whatever, because I explained to her on the phone today, like this was truly, not in the cards for us. It just felt like, of course, something like this happened. Like we've been waiting so long for this to, you know, come, but I'm trying to not uh, harp on it too much. You know, we'll get propane when we get propane. And for now, we're gonna put up a shed. You're eating your delicious acorns again that you like to find in the woods. That's nice. But we're about to erect your new beautiful palace today. Go tell Ducky. This roll in this metal pole over that I know is 100% straight and that'll let me see if there's any kind of imperfections on the levelness, whatever the word is there, for the gravel. Here comes one sausage imperfection. Whoa! <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it looks pretty good. So today we are building our patio well 10 by 10 shed in the color coffee brown. So it's gonna be like that on the outside, this kind of more white on the inside. And then we'll talk more later on about our insulation options as winter goes on, but this is going to be way less deteriorated by the elements than wood would be. So we're very excited about this. It looks pretty rugged, pretty, you know, industrial and we're gonna put it all together today. So last night, Finley laid out all of these pieces and labeled them just so we would have a better understanding of everything and how it would come together. And he's reading the instructions over there. I got my first load. Peach, it's not ready yet. Peach. So are you gonna like when you sleep in there? So in the packaging, they gave you a little bag of screws. Yeah, 
Yeah, it comes with everything. That's great. Everything except for the tools. So like you would need an impact driver. Mm -hmm. Let me talk to you. Buy you a drink. Yeah, I'm T-Pain. You know me. So we're just gonna grab these four pieces or possibly more than four pieces. Some gasket screws, yep. These Vermont local apples from the co-op are the only apples that I've ever eaten in many years of life that don't make my mouth itch when I eat them. So that shows you they ain't spraying, at least not as much as the other grocery stores. Get my freak on, yeah. So far this thing has been pretty foolproof. Like some of the mistakes I've made, I haven't been able to make. We're setting up all of the top supports now for the walls, and then we can install all the walls. We have a little barky doggy neighbor. Well, I just called the propane company and updated them on our oil tank because they're going to fill that on Monday. And then called the town and checked in about the culverts on our road and just was like trying to get an update on when that job will be done. And the job is already done today but conveniently it was just being done at the exact same time as the propane drop off. So when I called and checked in about the propane and asked when they could come back out to do it, now that the road's open, they were like, we can't do that until November 10th. So another month. It's honestly just so infuriating. Like I can't even get into it more than that. We're doing the walls. One wall down. The Piggy Palace. It's <laughs> coming along. I had to make a couple phone calls inside. I had to call the town about our property taxes. There was some kind of an issue with a double payment. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of all of that. And also I'm keeping an eye on these honker hogs. They free range during the day, then go into their little pen at night. Peach, this is where you're gonna sleep. Okay, well I really should have put that in here before I started building this, but I didn't. So we're gonna have to figure this one out. Please don't do that. Peach, of all times, the gift to your house. Be my guest to just leave. Hey, oh, buddy. What's up? Basically, small rolly, smallish rolly, medium rolly, large rolly. I'm gonna try to just get it up on the first and just serious, huge Jacob muscles from behind. Push that just right in there. If that's feeling hopeless, I'll probably try to pull it and have Meg run into it with a lawnmower or something like that. Shouldn't we flip it around so that the door is to the door? Yeah, I guess we should, huh? I'm the one who got us into this mess in the first place. I reminded him he wanted to put the house inside of the shed. There we go. I cranked up the ISO and the exposure so that it would be a little bit more bright for ya. Cause we are approaching dusk. It's about 612. We actually moved this house back in 2018 before we went home for the holidays and we had to move it from where Finley built it into the pig pen and we did it then. So we're gonna try to do it again now. Maybe I could back the truck up into it. I need the... this. Oh god, baby. This is just... And I'm just an innocent bystander, huh? I think it's because like that log isn't really cylindrical that you put it on. So it has to like flip instead of roll. I just want to say I'm ready to hit it with the truck at any point. Oh well well, here he comes. Okay, hold on. Keep going. Keep going. It might be easiest to just move it by hand now. Okay. Feels good. Another improbably, improbably heavy object moved without having to ask a neighbor for help. That's all a man ever wanted, was to not ask for help. Do you feel like you asked for too much help in Oregon or something? Nope. Love you. Did you everything else? 
almost ready for you, Beecher. Ready. I got the two metal poles in the gravel, then I got the wooden one perpendicular to them. I'm gonna lift this up and that'll allow me to roll it back a little further, I think, at least. Okay, we got the work lights on. Should I try to get them to come to bed? Oh, uh, probably not until I finish up here. The next day. Guys, I'm getting bangs today. I'm about to leave for my hair appointment. Finley and I are gonna start seeing the same hairdresser and I'm very excited for my appointment. My hair, I washed last night. It's still a little damp just because my hair is really like thick and long, but I'm gonna get a little trim. And then I'm also getting bangs. Oh, yep, it's happening again. I missed them. I haven't had them since 2019, so. Just figured, you know, it's time to bring him back. So I'm gonna leave the camera here with Finley today though because he still has to do some work on the shed, but I'm gonna go and do that. And then I also have to send off some packages and then I'm gonna come back home. Okay. 10 seconds later. Hi there, partner. It's my first day in my long johns. It's not ever that cold, but I'm getting ready early. Officially your last night in prison. Served your bid well. Overseer, let me just tell you, here's some well-behaved hogs. Very beautiful hogs and very well-behaved. And you're free. Wow, look at that. They're not a big fan of the gravel because their foot, such a small footprint, it punches right through it. I mean, it's fine just for a few steps like this, but I'll probably end up doing um, maybe like the rubber mats kind of stall mats in here and then just have like a little strip of gravel right there or something like that. The whole point is to have good drainage here so I wouldn't want to cover the whole thing with rubber or that kind of defeats the purpose. So um, anything that's covered by the roof I could put rubber as flooring there but on the exterior I'll just leave it as gravel. And I might take a little more from the truck and fill in where it's kind of got compressed down a bit. The next step uh, according to the instructions is to put the roof on so that's what I'll be doing. After that comes the door, and that should wrap this thing right up. Yeah, I'll keep y'all posted. It's a few new ladies, just checking out the new pad. Yeah, I'll put some rubber down for the ladies. Yeah, you're a sweet hog. Wow, these are fat ladies. Wow. Wow. These are big fat ladies. Meanwhile, at the crusty crack. Whoa! <laughs> jump scare to bangs, but a really good jump scare. He did so good. I went to Russ Tonsorium in Brattleboro and the guy who works here, his name is Simon Miller. He's a major sleigh, so nice, so friendly. And I told him I wanted some kind of like more framing pieces that will like grow out and frame my face like as they go, you know, and more of like a fuller bang. And I love them. I can't believe I have my fringe back. This is so nice. I'm like looking at myself in my phone being like, wow, I can't believe it's like happened again, you know? So it'll definitely take some adjustment throughout the day of me looking at myself and being like, I really have bangs again. Anyway, I need to go to the agricultural store and get more feed for the pigs and also send off some packages and some various other things. But I just wanted to show you. My agricultural store was selling Squishmallow beds. So I got one pineapple. Oh my god. And then one, I guess this might be like an octopus. Yeah, I think it is an octopus with this one and the little tentacle legs. So the purple's for Rue and the yellow is for Larry. And I'm so excited. And I have to go around to the warehouse now to load in the pig feed. Okay, this shed needs to be obviously organized and made a bit more manageable. But um, this is where we're keeping the pig feed up here where they can't reach it. We filled a bucket of feed before we left Virginia. And then I just went and kind of like got it so we could top it off today. But it's just their original mix, that OG alpha alpha pellet crinkled oats because our agway didn't have rolled oats and you really can't tell the difference. An oat is an oat, you know, black oil, sunflower seeds, and then sow pellets, which are just pig pellets. It's like a complete feed for them. And then all of the bulk of those bags are in these big trash cans so that we can like close them off to pests. This one's actually empty, but these two 
have um, the four bags of stuff in them and they're just grazing and eating over here having a lovely time I also got some hay and I always feel like a friggin idiot whenever I get hay in my Lexus because I didn't have the truck the truck also still has some rock in it from the shed build with the like rock we needed to put down for the foundation hopefully it's not too messy to get out but I was just doing equal parts of all of the feed and mixing it together in that white bucket so I got like my measuring cup out and then also I got the piggies a little brush because they love a good brush you know and so I got them this too which I'm probably just going to keep in the shed as well but I just don't want it to get dirty you know you're still looking for feed well I put it all where peachy is and I don't know if I already mentioned this or not but I was kind of hesitant to get the hay because every time that we get hay and put it in their little house like the wood house they'll pretty much just like take it out by the mouthful and push it out of the house i don't think that they actually really enjoy it that much for bedding but it is kind of like a fun activity for them so i'm thinking like i might just put a bale of it in the big shed and see if they want to you know push it around or bring it into their house or do whatever but they prefer shavings like wood shavings we have like cedar shavings for them in their house right now and in the past we've put down hog fuel which is like cedar bark which is their favorite probably that we've had but i haven't been able to find any hog fuel here around where we live i still can't get over my banks anyway my dogs are here hanging out and i haven't showed them their new beds yet are you dogs gonna be two squishmallow sleepers yeah well they still sleep in our bed with us but when they want to sleep in a little bed of their own then they can sleep in the squishmallows i'll probably bring them inside in a little bit here but they're enjoying the sunshine and the gravel you can't come for a car ride you're too big wow very cute this the is hogs are interested it's an octopus I figured. And then this is for Larry, my yellow pineapple wow, prince. Wow, so beautiful. Yeah, these are 45 buckarinos each, and the big ones are 80 each. These are the big bucks, nothing but the finest for our dogs. That's what I'm saying. Well, you can't have one because you sleep in the little shed, remember? You don't like comfortable things. You like like rock and weird stuff They do like, like to bury themselves in the gravel. Got a nice <laughs> haul here. Some Pyrex. You don't even like hay, Peach. I'm gonna move the car around and she just climbed right in Larry's bed. She said, pineapple please. Root, yours is actually the one underneath it. And I'm gonna pull the car back around to the front of the house, okay? But I'm glad you like it. Look at these doggies getting acquainted with their new beds. Good dogs. Oh, this is my apple, Larry. Not for either of you. Do you wanna climb in there? See if you could snuggle right up? You would look like a really big donut boy in there. Rue really likes this one. I actually think she might steal it. Oh no. <laughs> Ew. This is not yours. That's yours. Good girl. That's yours. <laughs> she really likes them. Larry wants me to bring his to his sunspot. Okay. Look at my perfect, beautiful pineapple prince. He loves it. I knew you would fit just right in there. Dad really wanted me to get the large one. I said, no, thank you. What follows is a brief construction montage. So this is what I got up next. These kind of beams on the roof. Putting this together was kind of challenging. Um, these four bolts right there. I just had a hard time holding all this metal together while also holding the screwdriver in one hand and the ratchet in the other. I just got to get these roof panels on, then it's a door. I think I'm almost there. Stunning, gorgeous, slay on a Mariah Carey, slim thick. It got dark, so I had to stop, so I came. Got the door stuff in here. Just gonna slap these bad boys together real quick. Uh, should give me a head start on tomorrow, if you know what I'm saying. I guess I probably won't film everything, um, so here's a nice before shot in a second, and then maybe I'll just show you an after shot. Take it all in. That's not as pretty as the next shot's gonna be. Wow, absolutely wonderful out here in Jersey. We like to do something. We like to do something called the DoorDash. Oh God, feels good. Trying out a new look today. It's called the point of view style. It's like my face is <laughs> a camera or something really funny like that. Oh God, I hear them coming. Well, we're up. We're up so high, we're close to Drake right now. This point of view right here is gorgeous. House inside a house, love little house section. Hogs will be warm this winter. It's my beautiful work so far. Really just gotta slap those doors on. I already pre-built them and it's just bada boom, bada bing. Roof's looking good, whole thing's feeling secure. So pretty happy with the whole process. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is 
These sheds are pretty short, like I have to duck to walk in it and I can stand in the center, but towards the edges I wouldn't be able to. So I'm really happy to be using it as a pig palace. Um, obviously it'd be good for storage as well. I wouldn't want to try to do like a music studio or like an art studio or some kind of other sort of uh, more active use space. I think you'd be frustrated by the low head space. Wow, so beautiful. All put together. Ready for a couple of hog ladies. Hey hogs, you see your new house? Yeah, all right, I don't know what else to say. Uh, another one in the books, boys, let's go. We hope you enjoyed this brief construction montage. Guys, I've been working on this video for, I feel like two weeks, if not more. We started filming this the day of our moving day, like on the 4th of October, and I finished filming it on the 24th. Like there's been just 20 days of us doing the shed build and Finley really honing in on the frame. His carpenter self jumped out in those clips, how much he came cared about how even the ground was and how level everything was and you know how flush the pieces were fitting together and all of that stuff which is cute but um there was definitely a lot of footage of the shed build and then actually like erecting the shed and then of course the pigs and just making sure that they were like adjusting well and safely to Vermont and just getting like their different kind of setups for them ready because before the shed we had them at night go into to the culvert fenced in area that was around their little house so that they could still like come in and out of the house anyway you saw that that was a whole thing and then finley like reorganizing the basement and unpacking and you know apart from all of the stuff that he did that was more like project based i also was like running errands and going into town and doing my regular work stuff and then also saw friends and had appointments the doctor and the dentist and all of this kind of stuff like got bangs <laughs> like it was just a chaos vlog but i hope you enjoyed it okay i hope you enjoyed this um very long video of just all the things that have been happening at the beginning of fall for us here we have central heat now with our oil that got filled we're still waiting on the propane but like i said earlier in this vlog the propane is just for two wall heaters and then also for our stove so our stove and oven is still not working but you know we've learned to live with it over the past three months or so and then as for our roof getting replaced hopefully the materials are going to be fully in in the next two to three days and here at the house and then the guys can just start replacing the roof there's been significantly less rain this fall season than there was this summer so it's been nice to have like a little bit of a break from you know worrying about the roof and stuff like that but obviously we're still going to replace it so i wanted to update you guys on that we're still very much so in the midst of our bedroom remodel and just all of that kind of stuff which we're still working on the video for and yeah um there's been a lot of things here but i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a big thumbs up for me and comment down below brief construction montages are life we love a good spongebob time card and there was a lot of them in this video because there was a lot of time to follow but anyway i love you thanks for watching when i'm not on here you can find me on patreon patreon.com slash megan hughes where i just share more about my life i've been taking kind of like a little bit of a break from sharing a ton on social media recently but i'm like slowly getting back into it so that's also why this video took so long because i've just been like in a slower season of creating and sharing in life and I appreciate you guys being patient and just waiting for the vids so here it is love you stay smiling bye y'all